Yo, what's up, y'all? Thank you so much for joining me. Today I've got an awesome dude, a professional boxer, Kareem. My dude, how you doing today? Good, man. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. You know, we're both locked down here. I felt like this would be a great opportunity for us to have a conversation and just talk about mental toughness because now more than ever, everyone needs mental toughness. And especially if you're trying to get into boxing, um, you definitely need more mental toughness than the average person. So, Kareem, you wanted to start by telling people a little bit about, about yourself. Obviously, Kareem Hackett, 5-0 and professional boxer, uh, currently in Toronto, usually trains out in L.A. Um, right now, during the pandemic, you're out in, uh, in Toronto. Well, anything else you want to share with people before we dive in? Um... I mean, that, that pretty much sums it up, man. Um, I'm an upcoming fighter. Um, grew up in Toronto, Canada. Uh, took the journey out to L.A. And um, we're in that pandemic, right? So stuck in Toronto, which isn't a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, at least it's – hopefully it's getting a little warmer there right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like summer's just starting. So um, at least we're not, you know – dealing with the pandemic in a cold Canadian winter. Yeah, no doubt, man. So I thought um, it'd be really cool to pick your brain on, you know, how you built the mental toughness to become a professional boxer to get to where you are today. And uh, hopefully people can kind of learn through your journey how they can cultivate themselves. Because big picture, the average person, when they think about a professional boxer, it's probably like a really scary concept. They're like, yo, this guy's life is, like, kind of scary, you know? Like, your average day at work is, like, a guy trying to punch you in the face, right? So you have to be, like, very mentally strong to be able to persist and to be able to go into that and put yourself in the fire every single day. And so I see this by a little bit of lack here. So I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to talk about um, why did you decide to be a professional boxer in the first place and, like, what, what was going on in your head that, you know, led to you actually thinking that you could do that? Um, well, I would say that um, pursuing professional boxing was purely out of love. Um, I don't think, I think it's hard to cultivate mental toughness without like a, an extreme desire. And, and that desire usually comes from, from love, right? Like you, you develop a passion for something and then you decide to pursue it. And um, because you love that thing and, and um, you, you, you develop through that thing, um, you have a willingness and understanding that it's not easy. But um, with that willingness, you decide to stay. Yeah, okay. So... What was the first time that you were introduced to boxing? Oh man, um, the first time, first time I was introduced to boxing, um, I think I was like, I think I was like five, like four or five. Um, I used to watch Friday Night Fights on, um, for us it's TSN, for you guys, ESPN. Um, yeah, Friday Night Fights. I think the first fight that caught my eye, which is, it sounds weird now looking back, but um, it's uh, Pauli Malignaggi, because he used to always come into the ring, like very, very flashy and with these crazy haircuts. And it was his hair that first caught my eye and then I started watching it. And um, just been obsessed with it pretty much ever since. Yeah, but there's a big leap you have to take between watching it on TV like many kids did to become a professional boxer. So when you saw that, you're like, all right, I want to go to the gym. I want to start doing what these guys are doing. Um, well, it wasn't that simple for me because um, like the way I grew up, it was just me and my mom basically. And um, anything I wanted to do was pretty much up to her as like a child. So, you know, no mom really wants to put the kid in boxing. Like, you know, it's was, it was very unlikely. Um, so I remember just becoming a fan that early, and then um, I wasn't able to do it then. 
um because you know you, you need your mom and you don't really make a lot of money as a little kid so um as soon as i was able to get a job um or as soon as I was able to get a to get a social security um to get a job i, I went and got that got my first job at like this department store that's not even around anymore it's called zellers and um and then i took that first check and i went to the gym pretty much never left <laughs> all right so thought, were you afraid at all to get in the ring and spar for the first time um it was more fun because like um especially when 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 you're young like you know we grew up on on like wrestling you know uh mortal Kombat, ninja turtles batman and superman everything was about fighting like literally everything at dragon ball z um that's where you learn philosophy from that's where you learn work ethic from from like these fictional characters right and um on recess and lunch we're all like play fighting and doing the moves and all that stuff so like sparring the first time you're not really thinking about the damage you could receive it's just more about fun it's like a continuation of the schoolyard except you're just a little bit older mm. how old were you then um 15 when i first signed up in the gym and had you been in like had you and your friends did you used to to fight before that like or was your first oh, time yeah. in the gym no, 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 no. <laughs> so like um, in elementary school, we were always like play fighting. Um, sometimes it gets real, you know. Um, in high school, I remember at lunch, somebody would bring, somebody brought boxing gloves to, to school during lunch. And we would always go to the bathroom and set up fights or we would go to um, somebody's backyard and set up fights. It was kind of stupid looking back, but it was like crazy fun. Yeah. And when during those experiences did you realize, oh, wait, I'm, I'm kind of better than everyone else at this? Um, I think I just noticed that I had better strategy than other people. Mm. Like people just weren't strategizing. And I was like, I was like, you know, he's going to throw this, this big haymaker from his right side why would you walk into it? And I just, when I, when I would talk to, when I would like ask them questions after the fight, like whoever fought or if I fought, I would just ask those kind of questions. And I just noticed that people just don't think about it like that. And I started thinking like, I could, there's something I could really do and I, that I have a talent for it. Yeah, but that's not normal. You know that, right? Like most people, when they think about fighting, it's like a fight or flight response. They're like, oh shit, someone's gonna hit me. I'm gonna throw haymakers. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to be okay in this situation. Why do you think you were able to kind of like sit back and strategize? Um, I mean, I would like to say it's natural. I, I don't know 100%, but um, I do remember that like when I was a kid, my mom, well, yeah. So, so okay, so um, when I was a child, like my mom used to take me to chess class mm. or like a chess club. And um, I used to have to play chess with these people, random kids or sometimes adults. And um, I think it was a thinking from that because it was very like, if someone's going here, they're trying to do this. So if they're trying to do that and you see them maneuvering this way, you have to maneuver in a, another way to like counteract it. Mm. So it might be natural. It might be chess. I don't know. <laughs> no, that probably definitely planted a seed there um, because, yeah, fighting, like the normal human instinct around fighting is to, to not strategize, I feel. You know, it's to, like everything goes like this. It shrinks down for most people where it's not like you had, the, you had like the ability to like widen your perspective and be like, what's the move that's going to come after this move? If he does this, maybe what should I do? Versus right. I think most people are just like so caught up in the moment they can't even do that. Right, 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 right. And that's another thing you notice pretty early on too, because like, um, you know, like smartphones became a thing in our generation. 
Um, I think like right before smartphones, we had like flip phones with these little rinky dink cameras, but either way, cameras were still around and everyone wanted to watch themselves and like post, you know, post one of their sparring clips or whatever. So like you recognize the way you feel versus how something looks, mm. you know, and it's like very easy to, to notice that, you know, you might have been were so or, or unsafe, whatever, or stressed, whatever it is. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So I feel like most people would think about a boxer. They're like, okay, you just have to be really mentally hard to be able to like put yourself in that situation. Do you feel like you view it much differently than that then? Like you view it more as like a game of chess than I have to go do this really hard thing where it's going to be really violent and scary. Yeah, um, I look at it more as chess. Like if, I, if I'm walking in there, um, chances are I know at least something about who I'm walking in there with. And basically it's like, it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. You know, you know, this guy is really good at throwing rocks. Okay, so I'm gonna be really good at catching rocks with paper, you know, or paper and scissors, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's see, definitely more of a strategic mind person. Um, well, what do you, I'm sure you've had people ask you before, hey man, like, how do I get, I guess, on the same level as you mentally where I can go step in the ring and I can think about strategy instead of like just thinking about survival. Right. So I think everybody's different and I think everybody has attributes that they can use successfully. Like when I notice, when I look at all the guys at the top, um, I, I look at everybody like a pie, you know, um, a, a pie, to, to make like a fighter, like how you would make a pie for like apple pie, you know, and it has certain ingredients and everybody's personality is different. So every pie comes out different, but they're all good still. I don't know if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So basically I think um, it, it all just boils down to just knowing yourself and just trying it and, and observing yourself and seeing how, how you, what, what you take to and what um like what comes naturally to you and and what doesn't come naturally to you and then you can kind of double down on those good things so for me it was strategy right for somebody else it might be toughness or strength you know for for someone else it might be getting out of the way um what whatever it is um everybody has something in them i think to to be like at, at least in the top 20% interesting top 20 you know, if yeah if they choose to exploit it yeah so for you it's not it's definitely not as much about like just being real mentally hard it's about becoming really self-aware right yeah because um like you kind of you kind of want to go with your natural flow you know like everybody natural without being taught everybody fights in a certain way you know it, it's it's very um embedded in, in your character and personality you know we all have traits that that make those things mm. so um i think when everybody figures themselves out is when you know they they can figure out a great fighter or a great artist or whatever it is um it's just a lot of self-observation there and and trying again they just have to all you have to do is commit to trying again and and if if you go and to keep trying it again, you will have to, you know, ob observe yourself and, you know, get to that point. Yeah. So how long did it take you before you were able to gain this level of self-awareness around like how you should be fighting? Um, I think I was lucky because um, I was, so when I first went to the gym, I was in high school. Um, at the same time, I was speak class and, and, philosophy kind of opened my mind up to what the mind can do and like what things like just just um you know just like recognizing um you know certain beliefs or that like like i think therefore i am like stuff like that 
Mm-hmm. Um, I was also reading too. So it made, I was reading certain books like um, My View from This Corner um, by, uh, it's by Angelo Dundee. He was uh, Muhammad Ali's trainer and uh, Sugar Ray Leonard at one point and some other notable um, champions. But um, I'm not sure if that answers that question. Yeah, sure. So you you learned from people who were deep in the game and had a ton of experience, and you kind of pulled it from there, right? You kind of heard what they were saying. Right, right, right. Working on yourself. Right, right. So so learning from that and then learning from my own personal experience, what's going on with you personally. And um, I talked to the two from, from your seniors. Um, whether you know them or not, you know, we all have seniors or confined mentors. We don't need to have a personal relationship, but uh, yeah, mentors and and books and in in the books and on TV and in interviews, and then also with what I was learning and observing with myself. Interesting. Yeah, so it sounds like you know these like universal truths almost, and definitely truths and different disciplines. You hear them show up a lot. And I was listening to Tyson before we got on the call. Is telling you talk about how you know he's been saying a lot recently like boxing isn't a tough guy's game it's a thinking man's game he's like if you're a tough guy like you're you're gonna have a short career he's like it's all about thinking man's game and most people they don't know that right they don't really think about a boxer as like being highly intellectual but when you talk about boxing it's all it's all mind right where yeah that's 100 percent mental well, 90, like, obviously, you know, you can't come off the couch after eating ice cream and, and potato chip diet, you know, for a month and then go, go fight Mike Tyson in his prime. But like, so you do have to prime your body, but um, if you're not mentally strong, you're not, you're not going anywhere either. Yeah. And even that, uh, the perseverance to get yourself in shape. I mean, that's so mental because it's like the monotony of, every day like if you're in a fight camp how many how many hours a day are you dedicating to training between like food prep uh workouts fitness wise boxing specific stuff watching film how many hours you have to spend a day on that i would say if someone's doing it properly and 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 um looking at all those things it's 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 full time for sure yeah so I think that's sure, about like six to eight hours a day. Right. And I think that that gets missed a lot in like, people think about that as a physical thing, but it actually is a choice. Like you have to make a choice to wake up in the morning and go get that workout in. You have to make a choice to, you know, eat the right amount of food when you're trying to cut. You have to make a choice to not just go through the motions of training, but actually try to get better while you're training. And, uh, right. Hugely, hugely right, right. mental. Yeah, hugely mental. And I would say another big thing would be faith, because mm-hmm. when somebody goes down that road, they already made the choice, you know. But um, I think every day they have to, um, you know, they have they have to they, technically they have to decide again. But really, they should have decided once. You know, and not not listen to that lower self or weaker parts of your mind that wanna um, make you reconsider the, the the commitment that you made. Yeah. So it was that your deal, man? Did you make a choice one time? You're like, yo, this is what I'm doing with my life. I'm gonna be a pro boxer, and this is gonna be my main focus. Yeah, I remember I decided once in um, in high school. I was just like. It was just, I was in class and like this light bulb went off in my head and I was like, yo, I could actually do this. And I was like, you know what? I should then, I, I'm I'm gonna do it. This is what I'm gonna do. And and um, I'm not sure if I even had my first amateur fight yet at the time. Mm-hmm. I, I just knew I was capable. And um, from making that decision once, I pretty much shaped the next Oh, I'm still, I'm still feeling the effects of that now. Like I'm still going down that path now. You know, it's it's been years, over a decade, maybe uh, I mean, about thirteen years. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. So as, as many people know, and those of you who don't, like boxing is one of those sports where there's not a boxing league where it's like, if you're just good enough, then eventually you get your opportunity. It's also, it's like, you have to be good enough and you have to be met with the right opportunities in the right time. And so how do you keep yourself mentally locked in and, and focus when there's so much uncertainty always around your career? Right. I think um, that, that can be really challenging, especially when, um, especially if, you know, when you come to those like short term issues, you know what I mean? Like if someone um, is having a hard time, maybe uh, living in a certain area or having a hard time at home any, any way or financially, whatever it is. And, and um, it may feel very immediate, but um, if you're able to think about things in a longer sense, like longer term, um, you'll, you'll realize that those things that felt so immediate that want to knock you off path are very, very small, mm. you know, are super small. And um, it's just about sticking to that, that vision every day and just understanding that that's the bigger picture and that, um, you know, some, some days you might not have a lot of money. Some days you might have a ton of money. Either way, you still have that one singular mission that you need to accomplish. Yeah. So what's your mission, Kareem? To be a world champion. World champion? Light heavyweight? Specifically? Light heavyweight, light heavyweight world champion. And then anything else from there, you know, ideally cruiserweight after that and, and heavyweight after that. But first things first, light heavyweight. You want all the belts? All of them. All of them. Undisputed at all weight classes. Light heavyweight and above. Yeah. So looking at uh, the other light heavyweights right now in your division, um, who would you like uh, a matchup with? Who do you feel like you match up well with? Um, so who, who do we, who's champion right now? We got Arthur Vita Beef. We got Dimitri Bivol. We got John Pascal. Um, and I believe there's, I'm not sure if there's one Oh, more. oh no, uh, Canelo. Oh. Canelo, how could I forget Canelo? Yeah. Um, I like my odds with all of them, to be honest. I think um, I bring things to the table that they all have a hard time dealing with. If they could even deal with that, I really don't think that they can. So I like my odds, man. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to you starting to uh, become more of a household name for you to uh, start calling more people out so people know the name. Cream Hackett, they know that this is the man who's coming for the light heavyweight division. Um, do you feel like you're primed right now? Do you feel like you're better than you've ever been before? Yeah, I do. But more importantly, I feel like I'm still getting better too. Mm. You know, um, I got a lot to look forward to. Yeah. Talk to me about that. How do you, how are you always trying to get better? How do you get better? Um, well, uh, when you're in there every day, um, you, you, you start to, um, I guess, take inventory of what's going on and what the full picture is kind of like, like a video game, like, uh, you know, in like NBA 2K and you create your character and you have like X amount of like certain stats, like speed or strength or smarts, or whatever it is. Um, I feel everybody knows what they're good and, and bad at. And, um, if they just, you know, just focus on just inching up the bad one, you know, that 1% a day that over time they'll come a whole different person. Like looking at someone like Canelo um, since his fight with Floyd Mayweather, he, he's a totally different fighter now. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see anybody beating him now, you know? Besides me, of course. Besides me, yeah. I mean, as a fan, but as a competitor, of course, I mean. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> okay. So you kind of view yourself as like, a, a, um, like an action hero and you're like, all right, I need to get this up two points over here and maybe increase this, you know, I held in the video games are like, all right, I'm going to increase speed from 96 to 98. Like, and right. do you train like that way? That way? Yeah. I think I look at everything that way. Um, it's like, you, you know what you have a natural inclination to, and you obviously want to do more of that, but then you also got to look at the things that you didn't want to do and why you didn't want to do them. And chances are, Nine times out of ten, the road to improvement is doing the things you don't want to do. 
So if you get up and do things you don't want to do every day, you're, you're going to be a whole new beast, a whole new level. Oh man, that's such a great quote. When you do the things you don't want to do every day, like that usually leads to the real greatness, huh? Yeah, the next level for sure. Yeah, I think I listened to too much uh, uh, Mike Tyson's Hotboxing podcast because I know all those quotes. He's like, you got to do what you hate to do and do it like you love it. Right, facts. Yeah. yeah. Facts. Like, you probably don't love to go for like long ass runs every day. You know what? Um, I actually grew to love it because of Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah? Um, the, yeah, this is, so this is like way before Hotboxing podcast. But um, he had the this movie doc that came out. Um, I must have watched that like 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 a hundred times. But um, he basically goes over um, the way he approach. He goes over everything basically. And and um, one of the main things that stuck with me is when he said um, you gotta do. He said he, he mentioned the things that he hated, and he said you gotta do them like you love them. Mm. And and I just started telling myself. You know what? I love running. I get to run. I'm I'm so blessed. I get to run every day. You know, and um, once I started doing that, I I found what I loved about it, and then I I it became true. I loved it. Mm, yeah, you you change that belief too, right? You went from like believing that you you hated to run to believing you loved to run, and the only thing that really changed was your mindset around it, right? The way you're telling yourself. Right. Facts facts and then my and then my body changed because i started doing it so much (laughs) it's crazy how many things in life are just like that where you it's just about how you view the thing right you just view it from a different angle and it changes everything right that's a fact dope man well i'm really excited for you and your career man and um I would like everyone who's tuning in to watch this interview now to go follow Kareem. What's the best channels? I know you're on Twitter, but you don't really, that's not like a public Twitter. So is Instagram the best oh, way? Oh, no. no. Twitter is full of bullshitting and, and nonsense. Um, I'd say Instagram, um, Facebook, uh, Kareem Hackett on both. Words. So we'll definitely link you up, man. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for me. I'm excited to see what's going to happen in your career. Obviously, everything in the, and boxing is shut down right now but as we were talking about before this call like this is the opportunity when everyone else is kind of just waiting it's like you can get better you can control what's in your control so right 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 and there's a lot there's a lot we control the only thing that's missing is a sparring partner you know your whole game is there so yeah would you mind uh sharing like what have you been able to continue to do while you're you're locked down um, at first, at first, I was just running more. Um, I wanted to reach like another cardio level. I want to come out of this to have like a, a capacity to do a lot more than, than I was able to prior. Um, but then I had to rehab a little, a little nagging injury. So I just switched up and started thinking about my game. Um, you know, what holes did I have in my game and how could I fix them now? And um, I just do them shadow boxing at the park. Um, you could go over your entire game shadow boxing at the park. Mm. You know, you don't you don't need a, a facility to throw a proper punch. You know, and and actually, it's 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 way even easier now. I don't have to drive all those miles down to the gym. I just go to the park next to me. I pull up YouTube over a tape of like a proper jab, and I'll just mm. throw that a thousand times. And and when I come out of this, you know, my my jab or whatever punch I'm working on at the time is gonna come out a lot better. Mm. Like that Bruce Lee quote: uh, "I don't feel the man who, whatever, does practice different." Yeah, I, I don't fear the man who threw one kick a thousand ways. I fear the man who threw one kick a thousand times. Right. Yeah. So who who are you watching? Is it are you watching Julian throw his jab or who what who who are you watching getting jab tips from? Well. There's like a million ways to throw a jab. So I like to, to watch people who who um, have their own little unique jabs. Um, like Triple G has yeah. a great jab, a great strong jab. Um, Muhammad Ali has a great like dynamic jab. He's able to move laterally and, and jab really well and move backwards and, and, and all those things. Um, Larry Holmes is another classic, another, another one on the all-time top jabber list. 
Um, there's a lot. So I, I try to just steal from the best and, and put my own sauce on it. Mm, that's awesome. So you kind of, you model what you like about what they're doing with their job and then you make it uniquely your own. Yeah, great artists steal, man. Great artists steal. Steal from the best. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's no point. Just steal. That's true, man. <laughs> I mean, it's all been done before. Now all you can do is kind of sprinkle your own sauce on it. And exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. It's not like anyone's coming into boxing and making up new punches, really, right? You can exactly. We have the same, what is it, six punches? you know, since the dawn of time, but everybody's throwing them so differently, you know, why is that? Yeah. You know, so. Very cool, man. Awesome, bro. Well, is there anything else that you want to talk about while I have you here or share with the people who are getting to know you for the first time? Um, just stay tuned, man. We're all building. Um, we're going to continue to do so, you know, some of them might catch me at this stage. Some, of, some, of, some people might be seeing this, you know, when we accomplish all these things. So, you know, this this will be a good one to pull out the crate later. And hopefully this has some value that someone can get um, today. Yeah, absolutely. Because everything you're talking about is, it's a fundamentals for success. You know, deliberate practice, which you talked about. Trying to find, zone in on one thing and becoming great at it. Making it your own. Self-awareness. Learning how, how do I uniquely show up as a boxer and bring me into this. You know, uh, doing what you hate doing it like you love it, changing your mindset so you can stay consistent. I mean, all these things are what make a champion. And it's awesome because um, you're 5-0 and right now, so you're early in your career, but people are going to you know, see you when you're 30-0, and out, and you're going to say the same shit. You're going to be like, hey, yeah. I'm doing what I've been doing. Facts. Facts. All right, Kareem, thank you so much for uh, you know, sharing your mindset around boxing. I think people are really going to appreciate it. Uh, if anyone has questions, you might have to hit you up and uh, follow up with you. Yeah, man. Um, could we put, like, contact info in the description or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we'll do. All right, cool. Yeah, hit me up. Anybody, hit me up. If you have a question, hit my line, and I'll more than likely answer. Awesome. Unless, so, unless I'm busy, then I might take a while, but eventually I will. <laughs> no doubt. Until, until your inbox is just blowing up that you can't respond anymore, but... Until then, you guys can get in early, and uh, hopefully you, you got some new fans today uh, through this uh, conversation. Yeah, man. All right, man. Thanks so much. Deuces. All right. Peace.